Okay. So this is section 3.3, and this brings us to a very important test that we can perform on critical numbers. Critical numbers, we now know, are sites where we'll get hills, valleys, or flat spots. So we call those relative maxes, relative mins, or flat spots. And the technical name for those are inflection points. We also know that finding the critical numbers isn't good enough. You can find a list of critical numbers, and you don't know really what they are. All you know is that they're either hills or valleys or flat spots. You're not sure which. Or these sharp corners, those you will get as well. But you're not sure which one you have. Do you have a sharp corner up or a sharp corner down? And that's when you set F prime undefined. Don't forget to do that. And that's really set the denominator of your derivative to zero to find those. Well, the first derivative test taps into precisely what we talked about in the previous video. So if you haven't watched the previous video, you should watch that first. And that's about increasing and decreasing. What we're going to do is we're going to find our critical numbers. We're going to build our table of increasing and decreasing. And then, right on the bottom of that table, I will be able to identify what the critical number really has. I'll, I'll know if it's a maximum or a minimum. So let's do that. And by example, we're going to look at a function here. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to take a look at just a diagram. So this is section 3.3, but this part of the section will be the first derivative test. And the goal of the first derivative test is to reveal the nature of your critical numbers. What are they? Hills? Valleys? Flat spots, maybe? Or sharp corners? <laughs> These are what you'll find at critical numbers. But which one do you have? First derivative test will definitely tell us. Now, let's say you had a function where it had an interval of decreasing. It reached a critical number at the bottom of a valley, and then all of a sudden started increasing, right? If you actually made the table and you broke it down so that you could write that this interval was decreasing, this interval was increasing, of course, you know the switches always take place at the critical numbers. Wouldn't that tell you what kind of critical number you have? In fact, let's say this is the bottom of the table. C act as a slicer. And we get to the very bottom of the table, and what do we like to write? that this interval here was decreasing and this interval here was increasing. Now, if there's a switch from decreasing to increasing, in other words, if there's a switch in which f prime was less than 0 negative and then all of a sudden switched to f prime being positive, you know what kind of critical number you have. Just draw a picture here. So draw a little decreasing curve like that. Draw a little increasing curve. What do we have down here? Oh, it's the bottom of a hill, a valley. I'm sorry, bottom of a valley. So we call that a relative minimum. So it's almost, you don't need to memorize these over here. You just simply look at your table, and you draw decreasing, you draw increasing, and it will tell you what you have. Um, Maybe the critical number, a different critical number, as acting as a slicer, came through here, and we got a section that was increasing that switched up to decreasing. If that happened, draw the picture. Increasing, switching to decreasing. You see what you got here? That's the top of a hill. That's a relative maximum. So we look for these switches. And rather than memorizing, we just draw the picture. And the picture will tell the story. This happens sometimes. What if the critical number came down as a slicer, and at the very bottom of our increasing, decreasing table, it said this? Or decreasing, decreasing, for that matter. What happened here? Let's draw the picture. Increasing, and then, well, how did we get a critical number? There's probably a little flat spot there. 
and then increasing again. So what is this critical number? Certainly neither a relative max or min. Now, it's pretty easy to see and infer that this is a flat spot, right? So I think we would call that a flat spot, or we would call it a point of inflection. That's the technical term for that. So right there, it just sort of flattens out. Curves that do that look sort of like this. They just flatten out for a moment. And they don't switch, increasing or decreasing. So let's do an example. Let's do an example here. Let's apply the first derivative test. Now, we have not yet run into vertical asymptotes. But I've got to tell you, when you build your tables of increasing and decreasing, vertical asymptotes technically are not considered points of inflection because, uh, sorry, they're not considered critical numbers because they're not really there. They're not really any y values there to be seen. So critical numbers are supposed to have a point involved. But when it comes to increasing and decreasing, you definitely want to see those. So let's do a table of increasing and decreasing for this particular function. The question would be find the relative extrema, plural. And when I say extrema, I mean the relative maxes and the relative mins. So these are the things I want. Hills, valleys. I really don't want flat spots. And I want these two as well, the spiky ones. Okay. So these are the four things we're searching for. They will all be found at critical numbers. But start the problem. Start the problem by finding intervals of increasing and decreasing. Just like we did in the previous section, previous video. So how do we find these intervals? You need your slicers. And what are the slicers that slice up your domain? Critical numbers and Vertical asymptotes. I have to call them out separately because technically they aren't really critical numbers. So how do we do this? Here's your function. We'll give it to you here. x to the fourth plus 1 all over x squared is my function. And the first thing we can say right out of the gate here is that vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator function is equal to 0. there's no question that we have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 0. Now, let's be careful about that as well. Think about what would have happened if this x value also made the numerator 0. Then it's 0 over 0, and that's a different animal. That's a tiny little undefined spot on the curve that is not a vertical asymptote. So let's be extra careful about that. So set the denominator to 0. Get what you think is a vertical asymptote and double check to make sure that the numerator is not 0 at the same time. So x equals 0 is now in our list of slicers. What else do we need? Critical numbers. So here are come the critical numbers. So f of x is x to the fourth plus 1 over x squared. Well, I need f prime. And it's looking like quotient rule to me, except you don't need the quotient rule. Now, if you ran the quotient rule properly, you would get the correct first derivative here. But there's no need for that. The denominator is a monomial. That means each term on the top, without calculus, this is algebra, gets its own copy of the bottom. x to the fourth over x squared is there, and 1 over x squared is there. In fact, let's write this as calculus would prefer it. OK, let's get our first derivative, f prime. f prime equals the 2 comes down, deduct 1 from the exponent. The minus 2 comes down, deduct 1 from its exponent. So that is f prime. Now, I've got a strong recommendation for you when it comes to this. 
because I'm about to do something. I'm about to set f prime equal to zero and f prime equals undefined. The best way to do that is to have it as one fraction. One fraction. So I want you to combine these into one fraction. The reason I say that is because if you want that fraction to be equal to zero, set the numerator equal to zero, you're done. If you want that fraction to be undefined, set the denominator to zero, and you're done. done. So let's go ahead and make this one fraction. And the way to make it one fraction is to use the LCD to join these together. That's x cubed. So let's put x cubed down at the bottom and the top over here. So f prime, a better way to write f prime would be this, all over x cubed. You certainly can factor out the 2 if you want. I'm fine with that. Okay, so critical numbers. F prime equals 0 is going to be discovered by setting the numerator equal to 0. Okay, and I guess you could keep the 2, but you don't really need the 2, um, so I'll keep it with it because it is part of the numerator, I suppose. But you see the 2 goes away pretty rapidly. So x to the fourth minus 1, when are you equal to 0? Well, x to the fourth is equal to 1. And take a fourth root. Now, I've got to tell you, any time you take an even root, square root, fourth root, sixth root, that's when you need your plus or minus. So I set my numerator to 0. I set my derivative to 0. That means these are sites of hills valleys, or flat spots. Not sure which. Not yet, anyway. OK, we're not done with our critical numbers. We're not done. And the reason we're not done is because we haven't investigated f prime equals undefined yet. All right, f prime e equals undefined, how do you do that? Well, on a fraction, you set the denominator equal to 0. And what's our fraction here? Well. It's our first derivative, which can, is right here. So let's set x cubed to 0. x equals 0. Wait a second. x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote, which is not a critical number. So x equals 0 came out, but this is an asymptote, which is not really a critical number. So we cross that off the list. Now, I'm not surprised that happened. If the function is undefined already, which at a vertical asymptote it certainly is, then the derivatives will be undefined too. But we throw them away because those are asymptotes. That's a different category. It's not considered a critical number. When is it a critical number? It's when f prime becomes undefined, but function is still defined. That happened in a previous example in the last video. f prime was undefined, but the function had a point there. In fact, it had a sharp corner. So don't call that a critical number. Now, the thing is, when you create your increasing, decreasing list, you want to use all of the above as slicers. So we want the negative 1, critical number, as a slicer. We want the 0, not a critical number, vertical asymptote, as a slicer. We want the positive one as a slicer. So let's slice up our domain into intervals first. So the very first thing you should do is at least tell me what the intervals are. And I think this is hopefully familiar. It's from the last video. Um, these are all the x's that are less than negative 1. These are all the x's between negative 1 and 0. These are all the x's between 0 and 1. And these are all the x's that are greater than 1. That's the intervals, four of them. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a representative for each interval. So for this interval, how about negative 2? For this interval, how about negative 1 half? For this interval, how about positive 1 half? And for this last interval, how about 2? And now I'm going to sample f prime at those particular x values. So let's do that. Now, 
F prime is right here. So when I make these calculations, that's certainly the formula that we should be using here. So let's do some calculations on these numbers. So where are we going to make these calculations? Not at the critical numbers, but at the test values. So I'm going to put a negative 2 in, and here's what I get. I'm getting F prime to come out to be negative 30 over 8. And I guess I could certainly reduce that. But I don't really care because that's all I care about is the negative. When I put the negative half in, what do we get? I'm doing the calculation as we speak here, so give me a second. Multiply that by 2, subtract 2, and then divide the result by negative a half cubed. Boy, I'm getting a big answer here. What I'm getting is positive. 234. Positive, though, is all I really care about. Let's put the one half in and see what we get. And then let me divide that by x cubed, which would be 0.5 cubed. And hang on a second here, it's not coming out right. <laughs> 0.5 times 2 minus 2, dividing that by 0.5 cubed. All right, this is incorrect. This is actually 15. Sorry about that. Because this is coming out to be negative 15. What I really care about is the negative. Let's put the 2 in there, and you probably can imagine what it's going to come out to be, but let's check it anyway. It looks like it should, based on this symmetry, should be positive 30 over 8, but let's try it. So that's going to be, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Well, let's reduce 30 over 8 as 15 quarters. Again, all I care about, pluses and minuses. Now, underneath, tell me about this curve. Is it increasing in this interval or decreasing? Well, it's got a negative derivative. That means it's decreasing. Now it's got a positive derivative. That means it's increasing. This tells me it's decreasing. This tells me it's increasing. The first derivative speaks the language of increasing and decreasing. So what's the first derivative test? Right down here. Draw a little portion of a decreasing curve and an increasing curve. And I know what I got here at x equals minus 1. You're a relative minimum. Now, we're not going to do this one because that is not a critical number. That's an asymptote. We can ignore that one. Let's go to positive one. Draw a little section of decreasing versus increasing. I know it's over there, a relative minimum. We have two relative minimums. So both of these should look something like that. And I think what we could do is graph this curve to find out. So if we go here to our graphing calculator again, we can plug in this function, which is on top, x to the fourth plus 1, and then on the bottom, just x cubed. And we get rid of all this other stuff here. And sorry, x squared. I got mixed it up, mixed it up with the derivative. So check it out, guys, exactly what we thought should happen. Um, there's a vertical asymptote right here at x equals 0. I mean, that goes right off the page to infinity. We're never going to see the end of that. And then down here, look what you got. Pretty much right where it said it would be. At negative 1, relative minimum. At positive 1, relative minimum. So setting up a table of increasing, decreasing, like you did in the previous section or previous video, it's going to reveal exactly what kind of critical number you have. It's going to tell us whether or not it's a relative max or relative min. And honestly, the only thing you need to do that's beyond what we did in the previous video was to just draw that little picture down below and then identify what it is. Now remember, vertical asymptote is not a critical number, so you can't call that a relative max or min. So you really shouldn't be doing the test 
for, in this case, x equals 0. Okay. Let's take a look maybe at one more example before we finish up on this. So <clears throat> let's do problem number maybe 29 here. Problem 29 states f of x is x plus 2. raised to the two-thirds power. <clears throat> Find the relative extrema. That means both maxes and mins. So let's go to work. First thing, critical numbers. F prime, the two-thirds drops down. Deduct one from the exponent, please. That's negative a third. And chain rule says one more thing to do. Multiply by 1. So it's f prime. So let's find those critical numbers. f prime of x, when are you equal to 0, hill, valley, or flat spot, right? When are we going to get those three features? <clears throat> when the numerator is equal to 0. OK, look at that numerator. When is ever 2 equal to 0? Never. You know what that means? We don't get. We don't get any of those things. How about f prime equals undefined? That's when the denominator somehow makes itself 0. So let's set the denominator to 0. OK, when is this going to happen? Cube root of x plus 2, when are u ever equal to 0? Cube both sides, and let's find out. x plus 2, when are u equal to 0? We only have one critical number, and that is x equals negative 2. Now be careful. I set f prime to undefined. We've got to be careful with that, because when you do that, you will pick up vertical asymptotes if they happen to be there. So to really call this a critical number, I have to double check. Hey, x equals negative 2, do you cause the original function to be Undefined. If you do, then you shouldn't be called a critical number. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 0 to the 2 thirds power is y value 0. So you know what that says? We really got a critical number here, and it either looks like that or that. Just not sure which. Well, luckily, I picked one that only really has one critical number, and it's really a sharp one like that. So negative 2 is the only slicer available. That'll make life a lot easier. Intervals, please. All the x is less than negative 2. All the x is greater than negative 2. Test values. This would be an excellent test value here. And here's the best test value of them all that lives in that interval. And now sample f prime. So f prime at negative 3. Well, let's find out f prime, what it's all about here. Negative 3 goes into here. All right, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Not worried about that. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. F prime is currently negative 2 thirds. And we're in a region in which the curve is currently decreasing. OK, put 0 in. Remember, 0 was the best choice because it's quick and easy. All right, 0 goes in. We get 2 over 3 times the cube root of 2. And I'm saving time by not putting it in simplest radical form. You're in a region of positive first derivative, very definitely in a region of increasing. Let's check one more time. That's not an asymptote, so it is a critical number. It therefore is either a relative max, relative min, or flat spot. Well, because of how we found it, we know it's a sharp corner. That's certainly not going to be a flat spot. In fact, this is a region of decreasing. This is a region of increasing. And whether it's sharp or smooth, we still call it a relative minimum. And this indeed is the first derivative test. Without really writing any math down, 
you can use your table here and just draw a little decreasing and increasing. So what should happen here? Well, according to this, at negative 2, we should have a sharp corner, and it should be a relative minimum. Let's see if that works. So going here to our computer, a graphing calculator online, we punch in the function, which is x plus 2 raised to the 2 thirds power, and came out right away. Sure enough, look at that. At negative 2, we indeed have a minimum. We have a sharp corner. So that's the first derivative test. Definitely practice. Look at the homework. Build your tables of increasing, decreasing. And at the very bottom, draw those pictures, increasing and decreasing. And that'll tell you what you have, relative max or min. Thanks very much. And the next video, when you get there, we're going to be dealing with the second derivative. And it's a completely different animal and doesn't really connect or speak the language of increasing, decreasing. Let's remember, the first derivative speaks the language of increasing and decreasing. It tells us all about it. The second derivative will talk about concavity. And concavity is whether or not the curve is shaped up this way, concave up, or the whole curve is shaped this way, which is concave down. So we're going to talk about concavity in the next video. Thanks very much.